Well, we've you know we've got about four or five things on our practice plan. Um, key key points that we haven't done well, not just from Saturday, but recently. Um, you know, about three of those I'd rather not divulge. But um, you know, one common denominator I think in our loss uh, at Oregon and. Um, and at Washington was our inability to guard one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, actually, I've taken another step. Even when we played <coughs> Washington State, we had a hard time defending one-on-one. -on -one. So, um, you know, we've got to get much better at taking an individual challenge. And uh, there's a lot of different parts of the defense where you're, you're relying on a, a team scheme and, and everybody <coughs> being hooked together and covering for each other's tail. Uh, to put out fires when they arise, but at the at the end of the day, the Oregon game, the Washington game, were two that we uh, we basically just got beat at the point of attack, starting at the point guard uh, with Goss having one of his best games ever, and we didn't do a very good job of containing him. And and, uh, and Oregon has a bunch of players in the same category, so that's going to be a focal point for us. And then uh, turning the basketball over, just randomly throwing it into the bleachers and, uh, you know, it's got to hurt for us. And, you know, four of, our, four of our last six games are on the road. And, and the two that we had at home, one was a pretty good team. So you've got to be better. As you look at those, we could have easily been one and five and you could have been six and oh. Uh, it's not that far of a line between us making some plays at Oregon and us making some plays at Washington and and putting together a decent ball game here against Arizona. So uh, it can go both ways. It comes down to a lot of little things, but the turnover factor is is completely befuddling to me that um, and, and it's really a reflection of coaching more than anything. And I, I take as much responsibility. Uh, you know, I don't like to threaten people when they turn the ball over, but we're, we're the fact of the matter is if we don't guard the person in front of us, and if we don't have a little bit more importance placed on uh, taking care of the <coughs> basketball and trying to earn a shot, then we aren't going to win. And it's, it's, it's pretty simple. So those are going to be a couple of the key areas that we, that we focus on today. I, I think uh, whatever, however you want to diagnose it and <coughs> try to explain it, it's pretty much irrelevant. Because um, everybody's got a story this time of year. Everybody's got a story this time of year, and, and are we all right back there? Uh, everybody's got a different story and what they're facing and what they're coming off of, and there's a big wall in front of a bunch of guys, teams right now. I mean, it's March. Once you've reached this point, if you're not physically tired, you're definitely men mentally tired. And we've had a lack of focus. You know, we've had a number of breakdowns, and I'm not into excuses. I don't, I don't care who we played or who. The, the reality is that we want to keep playing and we want to accomplish some pretty cool goals that we've set for ourselves. The excuses are right out the window. And uh, it's going to take a little bit more toughness physically. It's going to take some more toughness, toughness mentally uh, because the good teams are the one that aren't really thinking about who they just played a week ago in front of a sold out crowd and making that an excuse for why we were um, not very sharp on the road. So I mean, let's not downplay. Uh, it's tough to win Pac-12 road games, as it's proven by everybody. We had a winning record in the Pac-12, and it's not time for us to jump off the bridge and, oh my God, we've lost three out of five. I know we've lost three out of five. And by the way, that's almost half the games we've lost all year. And it's not what I want, but it's not like really confusing as to what it is we're not doing. It's been pretty much right in front of us uh, the last few games. And if we choose to take care of the ball and we choose to guard the guy in front of us, uh, then we're going to have a far better chance of not talking about losing three out of five. So um, it's not a time to get complicated with fancy descriptions or excuses. It's it's time to step up to the plate and and uh, and do our part individually to make some plays. Yeah, again, I, I think uh, you know through my previous answer without really repeating myself is it's it's not that complicated you know and it's not time it, it always happens 
you know, the first sign of weakness and a little chink in the armor, then, hey, whoa, what are we going to tell the guys? What in the world are we going to do about what just happened? And, you know, we don't need a shrink. Uh, and we don't need a big yoga, Yogi Berra, you know, simplistic uh, definition of it either. I mean, it's, it's just, let's play harder. Uh, the reality is that, that, that we, we are uh, an average team, as are a lot of teams when they don't play harder than the opponent. And in some of those losses, we didn't play harder than our opponent. The Oregon game, the Washington State game, the two in particular that when you watch those games, and I have after the fact besides live, is that the other teams wanted it more and played harder and made some plays down the stretch. So. Uh, <coughs> We don't. We're not going to overpower anybody with our athleticism and strength, uh, you know. So the edge that we need is a mindset that okay, let's take care of the ball, let's do some of the simple things, and let's make sure we're playing harder than our opponent. And uh, that to, up to this point, when we've done that, good things have happened. Uh, whether it be on the road or at home, there's a correlation between those things. So. Uh, even though it might seem like a complicated time of year where we've got to come up with some kind of, you know, the genie's going to come out of the bottle and tell us what, here's the magic formula, it really gets back to right at the beginning of the year when we were getting guys down in the stands and trying to play really hard and playing with an edge and playing as an underdog, you know, and, and uh, so that's, that's going to be the message today. It's not, it's not going to be overly complicated. There's about four or five bullet points. We're going to shore some things up and and uh, try to get back to some of the basics. That's that's the key component. It should be easy to hit the switch that we are we got to play a lot harder. Uh, we got to guard a guy in front of us. It, it, as I was watching the film, Washington guys hit some shots, uh, whether it was broken down coverage or just not playing very hard defensively one on one and trying to keep a guy in front. And they made the shot, and we we looked surprised, like oh my god, they made that shot. It's like. You know, that, that's the mentality that we've never had before. If somebody, if they're going to hit a shot, they're going to do it because the coverage was correct and we gave it our best punch. And sometimes it is one of those deals, hey, guys, that's pretty good defense. It was just better offense. That wasn't the case in a couple of these recent losses. So uh, they've watched some film. I'm not going to, we're not watching film from Washington. Uh, I've got all the cliff notes down. We're going to have a little meeting before practice. and. Uh, that it's quite simple. I mean, we either respond to what it is I'm going to be talking to them about today and we do it and possibly have some success, why they wouldn't buy into playing harder and trying to take care of the basketball and being a little more efficient on both sides of the ball. Um, I'd be really surprised if they wouldn't. You know, it'd be different if, if we need to come up with a new offense or a new defense or find some new players, then it's kind of going, well, how are they going to buy into this? It doesn't make any sense. but. Um, we've done it before. It can be done, and uh, and this we're not going to be defined on the last five games of conference. That's there's hopefully some games left, and that's what we'll be defined on. It's how we finish. Yeah, there's there's uh, you know, this is certainly not a deal short of some preparation. I mean, uh, if we end up playing Washington, we are pretty fresh in our mind. If we end up playing Oregon, pretty fresh in our mind. Uh, Oregon State is playing Colorado. Colorado, we're as familiar with it as anybody due to the fact that we play them twice and we have the extra time to prepare for them. Oregon State, again, coming off a week ago's trip. So, you know, the one team in there is Stanford that uh, we've only played once and it's been a little while since we've played them. So, um, it can go the other way. You can have five teams in your potential matchup that maybe you've got a lot more scrambling to do, but I could stand up in front of our team Right now, with uh, with four out of those five potential matchups, assuming you can beat the first one, win the first game uh, for the second night, and uh, and that's the key is trying to make sure you're prepared. You know how we can deliver the pregame speech and what it is we need to do. And, and Stanford's the team right now that we've got maybe a little bit more additional work to do to catch up. But um, you know, forget what happens on Saturday. This is you know the deal, Dirk. It's it's. Uh, and there's no guarantee that Arizona's going to be playing on Saturday, and they know that. So there's a lot of teams uh, with a lot to play for moving into the tournament. That's why it's called March Madness. There's a lot of crazy things that happen, and uh, our focus, without a doubt, is, is with what we can do to continue.
control uh, or handle with what's in our control and not worry about anything else. And, and that's first and foremost this week of practice. And then we'll figure out Wednesday night who it is we play and have about four, uh, 24 hours to figure out how we're going to try to beat them. Uh, I know you're giving me that info for the first time. I, I didn't. I wasn't aware that uh, that Young was the player of the year. Um, you know, terrific, terrific offensive player for a team that I think exceeded a lot of expectations. So um, you know, I don't know. The, the balloting is always a little goofy to me, and and how it's voted for. And hopefully, there's not any shenanigans going on, but. Uh, you can't vote for your own guy, and uh, I can't remember exactly how we voted. It was either right at the top of the list. I know Young was one of the top guys that we voted for. I can't remember if he was the first guy or second guy based on the point system. So uh, the deserving, you know, it's hard. I think it's it's one of those years where Arizona's done a terrific job, and there's a lot of different pieces on that team, and maybe it got watered down a little bit as to whether McConnell should have been a MVP. And I think in our case, you know, maybe if we get it bumped up off the third spot, then DeLon gets a, a different look taken at him. So hard to say how the voting went, but, um, you know, first, I think the first team is, is pretty impressive for his two years here at Utah DeLon. Well, I think it starts with the nature of the team you're playing. When you're playing Oregon or Washington, it was evident in all the film we showed our guys that this isn't about a bunch of fancy plays where they're running a screen here and a screen there and somebody pops open and then you got to figure it. We've been pretty good in defending sets, uh, but with Oregon, <coughs> it's very much an isolation type of team where they're going to put guys in certain parts of the floor with not a lot of help built in, and you better guard the guy. Jerry Sloan came and spoke to us in the past, and those initials have been on the board for our last three or four games. You know, the scheme is one thing, but G Y G, guard your guy. Uh, and that involves getting down in the right stance, not getting uh, kind of hypnotized, mesmerized with ball movement to where you don't keep a guy in front of you. but. In the case of Washington's game, we were far too close to guys, like over-pressuring them. And then it was a rip through and get to the rim, and, and uh, we didn't do a very good job of keeping them in front. We backed off, and you know, Goss had a bunch of floaters in the lane. Andrews got to the foul line and made some shots. It's just a matter of, Brandon had a great play with two minutes to go. It's a four-point four game uh, with a minute 50 to go. And Brandon did, with 38 minutes gone, what we should have done at the beginning of the game and then beat a guy to the spot and take a charge. Um, so it's it's pretty much that simple. But it, when you're playing a team that is built a little bit on some of that isolation basketball, it's more imperative that you do it. It happened in transition against Washington, even after we scored, where we run back in transition and Goss kept pushing the envelope and we never got the ball stopped. So that's a form of one-on-one -on -one defense that's, that starts in transition. So. Um, I don't buy that, you know, it's that time of year, everybody's just as tired of watching guys have been playing more minutes than we have. But it's it's more of what it is we need to focus on, and that's been our Achilles heel, I think, in, in the past few games. Okay.